everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Desktop Dungeons. This is, uh, it's kind of a trip down memory lane for me, because Desktop Dungeons is one of those games, uh, I don't think I ever played it on the channel, but back when I started making YouTube videos in like the fall and winter of 2010, uh, there was like eight indie games you had to play. Everyone always said you had to play Braid, you gotta play World of Goo, you gotta play Super Meat Boy, maybe you even gotta play Gish, uh, and you know, various other ones in there, but Desktop Dungeons was one of those. It was currently in, or at the time, it was in like Alpha, or uh, perhaps even like a pre-alpha build and now finally it's been like three years since I, I originally played it it's come out on Steam it's 15 bucks it is a it looks like a dungeon crawler and it kind of looks like a roguelite and there is procedural and random generation going on with the dungeons but it's actually much more kind of like an RPG themed puzzle game if you ask me but it kind of defies genre classification a little bit in any case this is 15 bucks it's available on Steam let's get started so I played about um, I can just look on the Steam overlay here because this is being played in windowed mode. Uh, I've played about 85 minutes of Desktop Dungeons so far uh, on this build as well as, you know, probably three or four hours a few years ago, but obviously that was a while ago. Uh, this is a much more fleshed out version of what has been called the Coffee Break Dungeon Crawler. And they, what they mean by that is effectively, you can do one round of Desktop Dungeons in like 10 or 15 minutes uh, and then get on with the rest of your day. But you could also sit down and play this religiously for a couple of hours if you want to, if you're the kind of person who's into that. Uh, so this is kind of like our hub world or our, you know, our town screen, if you will, uh, for the Kingdom of Northern Land, which I've created. And this is something that was not in the game when I originally played it. We'll get to the uh, the core gameplay soon. In any case, there's a number of different things we can do here uh, in our town. Uh, we can go to our guilds or our, you know, the Thieves Guild, or, uh, Church, etc., etc. There's a Mage Tower. These basically allow us to unlock classes, and we can use those classes as our kind of dungeon explorers, if that makes sense. So if you have the church, and I do have the church, as you can see, then I can play as a priest, and the priest has certain uh, passive and active benefits that are different than if I played as a mage, for example, or if I played as a uh, thief, or if I played as a fighter, which is kind of like our initial starting class. There is also um, the tavern here, if I can actually, there we go. Uh, there's the tavern, and by going to the tavern, uh, that actually might be in the town here, one second. We, once we get in, we can actually, um, there we go, just click adventure. Um, we can choose kind of quests that sit out here in the wild. So why don't we just, uh, we can either go to Venture Capital or Beginner Brigade. Sorry, um, Den of Danger, I guess, or Venture Capital. Uh, I think we should probably go to Venture Capital, because I already did, uh, the Den of Danger. And basically our quest right now, as there's flags here, um, we, we have different quests associated with them. At first, our quest was just to beat either one of these levels, and then we get a banker, and that banker allows us to hold more gold, because after you finish a quest or a dungeon, you do get a certain amount of gold, you can only hold so much, so now I can hold a little bit more. Um, now our quest is to beat, uh these levels with every single starting kind of permutation that we have. So, uh, why don't we go to Venture Cave, uh, and I will select it, and we can move on. Now, I can choose a, a race and a class, so um, this gives us like six permutations here. I can be a human fighter. Oh, I didn't mean to actually go through with it. Let's, let's go back to our character sheet here. Uh, well, let's just talk about it this way. I can be either a human or an elf, and you can see the difference between them. Humans get uh, an attack bonus for every con 100 conversion points, which is something that we can do with kind of redundant equipment that we want to get rid of that we find in the dungeon. Uh, whereas elves get a little bit more mana for every 70 conversion points. We can also be either a fighter, um, and this conveys the passive benefit of having... Uh, kind of like a sixth sense where you can see monsters that are at the same level or l a lower level than you kind of in the wild, which is nice. Um, you could also be a wizard, can see locations of all glyphs from level start. I don't really like that so much. I play as the fighter primarily. Or you could be as the priest. Uh, an extra three health is gained per level. Health potions are like double as effective and physical damage against undead is plus 100%. That's also pretty good actually. Um, but why don't we play as a human fighter? It's, it's the most simple uh, of all of them that I would say. Uh, and we'll just load into the game here. So, the the gameplay of Desktop Dungeons, uh, the core gameplay at least, not the town stuff, is very, very simple and easy to understand. And you can control it entirely with the, the keyboard if you are so inclined. So, um, this hideous looking man here, uh, Horace Fringsnarg. Spring snag, I guess, not that it necessarily matters, is my uh, desktop dungeoneer, and it's, we're lucky enough to have started next to a monster who is uh, exactly the same level as me, which means I should be able to beat him. Usually, if you're on the same level as a monster, that means you will beat them, but it'll probably be close. So, uh, I'll just use my keyboard and I'll mouse over, well, you know, hover over, I guess, this goblin. You can see um, it has 6 HP, 6 max HP, I should say. And what I really like about this is how clearly it articulates what's going to happen when we actually hit it. So, 
Uh, you can see if I hit it next, I'm safe. And, and it'll go down to one health, and then it'll die right after that. Next level we win, obviously. So I hit that, and he dies. That is the basic core gameplay of what goes on in dungeons, or sorry, desktop dungeons. Um, also important, and the reason this is more of a puzzle game than a dungeon crawler, is every space you move to that you've never stepped in before, you get a little bit of your health and mana back. So you have to really manage the kind of empty space that you have on the floor because uh, you're going to need to use kind of walking around as a way to heal yourself. Unfortunately, the monsters also get healed as well. So we can do exactly the same thing here. Now, I do have a potion. Uh, I just leveled up, by the way. I do have a potion, and I do have a uh, mana potion as well. Um, I could use these, but it's not necessary yet. The, we'll see some inventory stuff pretty soon. So, for example, this is a glyph, and this is called Biceps. Boosts your next melee attack with a 30% damage bonus. Strike erodes 3% of enemy resistances. So we'll pick this up. Uh, and now, I have a spell that I can cast, and it costs a little bit of mana. Uh, but it also gives me plus 30% damage on my next attack, which might be enough if I get first strike to... Uh, you know, beat an enemy who is a higher level than me. So after you beat enemies, you get experience. And uh, if you beat enemies that are well above your experience level, or even like one or two levels above your experience level, uh, you get a substantial bonus in experience. So that's how you can really get to the high levels and end up taking out the dungeon bosses, which we will see pretty soon. Uh, but for now, I have largely just encountered uh, level one creatures. Keep in mind that um, as a fighter, all of these kind of like goblin masks that you can see on the level, those are only showing up because I am a fighter. If I was a different class, you would not be able to see those. Uh, so, this zombie is level 5. I doubt I will be able to take care of him. But, uh, this meat boy down here, it may be possible. Sorry, meat man, I didn't mean to insult him. So, I can just do some mental math quickly. Because, um, remember, beating him will give me a ton of experience. Because he's a, a substantially higher level than me. Well, a noteworthy higher level than me. Um, he's got 7 attack, I've got 10 attack. So, if I hit him, it's going to take me... Six hits to kill him, basically, or f probably five hits uh, with a uh, biceps. So if I run the math, first turn, I'll be at 13, he'll be at 42. Second turn, I'll be at six, and he'll be at 32. I could potion up, but I still don't think we're going to be able to beat him, in all honesty, even with the biceps. So instead, I'm just going to move out of here, and, and we'll come back later. One thing you can't do, oh, now that we have some extra abilities, maybe we'll be able to do it. Wanna fight? Summons an existing monster, adding slow debuff, uh, no blink retreat or retaliation, strikes second bonus XP. So we can use this to make sure that an enemy um, loses a couple of its effects, especially in the abilities to get away if it has them, and also um, we get first strike on it. So we'll obviously we'll pick this up. These are not single use, by the way. These are, um, uh, you can use them as many times as you want, but uh, you just pick them up like so. It looks like they might be consumables, but they're not. I still don't think even with these we'd be able to beat uh, the Meat Man yet, so... Uh, we might want to look out for a, um, a similar... Okay, what is this one? Wait, what? Swaps places with an enemy, adding slow debuff, strikes second. Okay, I don't, I don't really need that for now. Um, we can walk over that kind of mana area as well, and that will give us extra mana uh, tied to our max level. So I will kill this wizard and level up. Uh, and now, let's talk about killing this goblin, possibly. Because, again, you really want to strive to kill these enemies that are a level above you so that you can get way more experience and kind of slingshot past them so that you can be a higher level than the dungeon boss and thus have a better chance to beat him. So, okay, he does a stupid amount of damage, as you can see. Uh, I will... I can only get hit once, basically. So what I'm, I'm hoping we find is this spell called Fireball. It really, I'm, I'm going to call it Fireball. I think it's called, like, Ouch Burning or something like that. Uh, you can shoot this from afar, and it makes it really useful to kind of whittle down enemy health, and then you just come in and attack them twice, and maybe you have to use a potion, and it's very easy to get a level up on them that way. Um, we might be able to take out a level... Well, you know what we can do? I've wasted a lot of empty space here, unfortunately. Um, we might be able to, uh, kill this meat boy, or we should be able to kill this meat boy. Just gotta make sure that I'm watching this, because sometimes it'll be like, you, you'll look at the next hit indicator, and it'll say death, and that's not where you want to be, obviously. Um, okay, well, I really want to kill this, uh, maybe I'll get this health, uh, kind of token here first, and then we'll come down, and I'll see if, uh, there's monsters down here that I can take out perhaps more easily. So, uh, I was really hoping he was not level 1. You really want to kill level 1 monsters as soon as possible. Okay, so Burn De Raz, or Burn De Raz, okay. Um, that is the fireball spell that I wanted. Now we should be able to take out some uh, level... Well, we should probably focus on the level 5 zombie now, uh, because... Hmm. Well, I can only get hit twice here, but still, let's try the fireball, and I can use mana potions if necessary. So, we'll use the fireball. Fireball will do 16 damage, I think. And we'll only be able to use it once... 
and then mana up and use it again. So let me just run the math here. We can do 32 damage with fireballs, and then, well, let's just, let's go for broke, right? Unless, wait, these guys have 81 health? I've already used all these squares, so it might be better for me to, uh, like, just take a second here to backtrack and see what the goblin has instead. Still, oh, I can actually survive two hits from him now. And a fireball, yeah. So I'll definitely be able to kill this guy, but we're on the same level, so I can probably just fight him and kill him. Oh, it's pretty close. <laughs> I don't know if I'd recommend doing that in the future. Oh, there is a level 7 monster, a couple of level 7 monsters over here, actually. Alright, I'm back to full health. Um, and there's a mana potion over here, so... I think I may have made some mistakes. I probably could have been able to kill either a meat boy or a zombie here, but let's let's see if we can maybe kill this meat boy. He's got 108 HP. Good lord. Um, I'm I don't think we need any of this other stuff just yet. You can see why I call this more of a puzzle game uh, than a dungeon crawler, really, because it is. It's like kind of like a puzzle slash strategy game, which is fine, of course. Um, all right, should we try it? I don't know. Um, with first strike, we might have a chance. Oh, you know what I should do? Okay, the, I, I realize I'm wasting my time here, or it looks like I'm wasting my time here, but I should definitely get that mana glyph. So now I have 12 mana, and I can summon the fireball twice. Uh, but then will my potion allow me to summon a fireball for a third time? I don't know, I guess we'll see. Okay, so let's start with the six is our hotkey for fireball. You can see that did, uh, you know, X amount of damage. We can do it again. And I'm pretty confident that, uh... My mana potion is not going to let me uh, do fireball again, but it may allow me to do a first strike or biceps, which would save my life, possibly. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Um, we want to do M. There we go. Okay, so I cannot summon the fireball, but I can use either biceps or first strike. So I think first things first, we just hit the zombie here, and it'll go down to 26. Next hit, I'm barely alive. Um, but he is... Uh, one, one second, what is biceps again? It's like plus 30% attack or something like that. You can go to my character sheet. Plus 30% damage. So if I'm at 20 damage, 30% damage is like exactly 6. So biceps may be enough to just let me win here. Um, let's try it. Wait, if I hit him right now, barely alive. Yeah, if I hit him again with biceps, what does this do for me? Barely win. Okay, that's where I want to be. Okay, so that gave me way more experience, or at least proportionally way more experience than I would otherwise normally get. Obviously... It very nearly killed me as well. Um, and I just want to make sure, obviously, I'm healing up a little bit by just kind of walking around before I uh, get myself killed. I could use a potion, but I think it's much more prudent to save those uh, for our bosses. So let's clear up some uh, level 4 enemies here. And maybe once we hit level 6, we'll try to take out some... Ooh, this is kind of close, actually. Once we hit level 6, I'll try to take out some... Um, Level 7 minions. I could probably take out that level... S oh, no. Okay, so this is the boss. Those who search for the secrets of banking need to prevail in not one but two economist combat trials. I see that you're already prepared for this. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to go through the dialogue. But, of course, this is meant to be funny. I should point out, by the way, uh, excellent soundtrack and music in the game. Uh, the music is provided by both Danny Baranowski, a.k.a. Danny B., who, are you, who you are probably familiar with uh, from his work on, you know, Super Meat Boy and Crypto the Necro Dancer, Sound Dodger Plus, etc., etc., uh, and Grant Kirkhope, who you are also probably familiar with, even if you don't know his name outright, from his work on, uh, you know, the rare games of old Banjo-Kazooie, etc., etc. Uh, so the soundtrack is really, really good. Give me a second here to just plan my attack. We're probably going to level up pretty soon. Can we beat this Meat Boy without being killed ourselves? Uh, it actually might be close. You know, all the enemies, they have different characteristics. You know, the mages have, uh, low HP, uh, but also do a lot of damage via their spells. Uh, now that I have full health, I should be able to come back down here and destroy this level 5 meat boy pretty easily. Uh, we're, we're starting to run out of monsters, though. Uh, oh my god, I would still be killed. Okay, this is a good opportunity. You can see next hit death. If I actually use, uh, my first strike ability, mmm, that still might not work. In fact, I don't think it would. But if I fireball him, then use my first strike ability with the four, you can see I get a win. Okay. So it's very important to know what uh, kind of spells you have so you can prevail. All you have to, It doesn't really matter if you fall down to one HP for the most part. You can usually just uh, go up against uh, the enemy and beat him anyway. Um, I want to try maybe using fireball on this guy. I assume it's not going to do very much damage because he's a mage. But it will at least allow me to hurt him enough to kill him. Otherwise, I would have been... Uh, probably killed by his spells before I could have done anything. So it is, you know, it's very obvious what's going to happen, and that's what makes the game uh, actually 
more fun to play, I think. That is a, a glyph, basically, that gives us plus 10% attack. So it's important to get those as well, of course. Um, but that's what makes it more fun to play, I think, because there's very little uh, uncertainty that goes on. It, it's almost like playing chess, you know? You can see the rules, you know the rules, um, and it's just about, you know, using those rules to your advantage as much as possible. Um, as you can see, if you're treating this as a coffee break dungeon crawler, hopefully you take pretty long coffee breaks, because this level uh, is not necessarily short. Okay, at level 7, we should really cut through some of these uh, enemies that are a little bit lower level, because they never become, you know, more valuable than they are right now. And we should probably use our mana to uh, give ourselves the edge on this existing meat boy. It's going to be pretty close. I, I won, but I fell down to 3 HP, which is, you know, not necessarily where I want to be. Um, but you do heal up a lot uh, every time you move, so we'll probably be able to kill this guy in two hits, and then... We, we want to be at least level 10 by the time that we uh, come across our... Uh, dungeon boss. It is worth noting, by the way, that, um, you know, you might be thinking, oh, you can just, okay, so I should be able to use first strike here and avoid death. Yes. Um, you might be thinking, like, oh, why, you found the dungeon boss, why don't you just, like, whittle him down a little bit? Uh, can I survive this? Yes, okay. Why don't you just go whittle him down a little bit, and then when you have, uh, you know, more mana, come back and hit him again, and then when you have more mana, come back and hit him again. Well, um, the enemies actually get healed as you walk around the dungeon as well, so you can't, uh, unfortunately, well, you know, fortunately for the game's balance, but unfortunately for your, uh, style of play, you can't actually succeed that way. Should probably try to kill a level 8 man while we're here. I'm skeptical that I am going to be able to, uh, actually get to level 10 to fight this guy, but it's possible since I haven't really used, uh, I guess I did use one mana potion, but, um, I'm skeptical of our ability to succeed. Usually I just try to like save all my potions and then spam a fuck ton of spells at the uh, final boss. Um, I mean, on the bright side, we do uh, we did just pick up another potion, which is pretty meaningful. Even though it doesn't heal us for a ton, it, it's valuable nonetheless. So we're almost out of uh, monsters that we're going to be coming across here. This is uh, a level 6 guy. Okay, I'll be able to beat him. Sorry, he's not a mage. He's a warlock. They actually have names. But as you might expect, uh, you know, if you know the way that I play these games. I just give them my own names because it makes them easier to relate to for me. So we hit level 9. All we've got to do now is uh, manage to make the level 10 and then strategically fight the boss because it's not enough to just be on the same level. Um, the bosses are typically substantially stronger than the... Uh, uh, we'll use Fireball again here. Um, substantially stronger than the enemies that you fought before. So... Oh, I'll be killed if I do this. Okay, I'm going to use a Mana Potion, unfortunately. And then if I get first strike, I should be able to kill him, I think. He only has one HP left. That's so shitty. Oh, no. He still has first strike. Oh, no. I'm going to have to, like, walk away or use another mana potion and then, like, fireball his butt. I'm disappointed with the way that that turned out. But anyway, he's been killed now, so he can't bother me anymore. Oh, there's another mana potion, so it, it could be worse, I guess. This is level 8 warlock. I will win on this one, but it was a little close. By the way, this probably goes without saying, but the money that you can see, um, we will eventually use that to uh, upgrade our town. So, uh, here's the problem, right? I can look at the uh, interface on the right side and see that I'm not going to get enough experience to be able to beat this guy. Uh, or, sorry, to be able to level up after I beat this guy. So, um, it's not really going to do too much for us to fight him, except burn through my mana and potions and whatnot. So, uh, I may actually just want to go straight up against this uh, Vlad right away, but we could also go into this passage and explore a little bit more of the dungeon and see if maybe there's something down here uh, that uh, provides me with some value. I mean, obviously there's a ton of money here, but um, um, here lies the shapeshifter. At least we think so. It may just be some innocent townsperson we've mobbed. Uh, don't engrave that last bit, okay? All right. I understand. Um, I guess, is there anything else here that I can really spend time with, or is it just tombstones? This is actually the first time I've come down here. I thought maybe there'd be more monsters that I could farm experience off of. Um... Anything else? Oh, there's another tombstone. What about this one? Here lies the dwarf vampire in loving memory of a combination once possible, now lost. It's probably a joke about the way that the game used to be, I guess, or, you know. Here lies the witch doctor, practitioner of voodoo, master of totems, another character for another time. Cool! Unfortunately, it doesn't really save my life too much. So, uh, we picked up some money. We could leave the dungeon, but I think it's in our best interest to at least try. I'm pretty sure that we're going to lose, though. Uh, so my general strategy here, we're going to fire some uh, fireballs at the Dracula Man. Oh, I didn't mean to open up the codex, but you can do that. Uh, let's just escape out of that. Uh, and I will mouse over him 
And... Don't hit it! Ooh, he punched him. That's not what I meant for him to do. So, sorry, I got the mouse involved now and I don't understand what to do. Okay. Now hit him with the fireball. Hit him with the fireball again. Uh, as you can see, he's taking a little bit less damage than I would like. Apparently, if I hit him again, I'll be safe, but it's going to be, you know, close. Yeah, next time I'll be killed. Um, what if I healing potion? I will be safe. Okay, what if I healing potion? I'll be safe. I can't help but feel this is, uh... Just keeping me alive briefly. Next, I'll be killed on the next one. Okay. Well, remember, he heals if I run away too far, so I'm not really sure what I can offer here. What are my other spells? It's first strike. Oh, I can't even use this one. This one just gives me, like, extra attack. Might as well use that one, I guess. And if I hit him, will I be killed? Next hit, death. All right, so I guess we just lose this one, unfortunately. I'll just let myself die. Uh, actually, you know what? Fuck that. I'm not gonna let myself die. Maybe I can just leave the dungeon with the amount of gold that I have. Um, one second. Don't surrender. There should be, like, a, a ladder that I used to get in here. I'm just trying to remember where I started this level. And can I not just use that to exit back out? Unfortunately, maybe not. I thought I started, like, down here. I did get a little bit more health and mana back there. Uh, I don't think that's gonna save my life, though. So, you know, this is an, a, a pretty good example of how, like, improper planning uh, can basically screw you over. So, I have put myself, unfortunately, in a position where uh, I cannot win. I think I can still get a little HP back from uncovering these tiles, but, uh, you know, some of them are un uncoverable as a result of them being kind of, like, super interior. In any case, okay, well, let's just get ourselves killed then. Um, I'm trying to think, maybe one last thing I could do is try to, like, you, you know, you can take equipment that you don't want, and I should have done this earlier, and you can recycle it uh, by dropping it down here. And this gives you more HP, and I also think it gives you more attack as well. So maybe if I just keep, like, a couple of interesting uh, spells, I may have a better chance of success. I don't know, we're doing 85 attack now, that's probably not going to change too much. Um, get rid of this one, we'll keep fireball. 90 attack. Uh, if I had done this a little earlier, maybe I could have uh, taken out bosses uh, easier, but instead we're just going to die instead. Alright, so af after you die, you can see kind of like a summary screen. You absorbed uh, more damage than ever before, you regenerated more health than ever before, you spent more mana than ever before, you've killed almost as many monsters as ever before. Anyway, uh, my problem there, poor planning, I didn't actually manage to level up as much as I would want. So, you know, after you finish, you get uh, kind of the log screen of how you did, and this is like the, the order in which it happened, including levels up. Uh, we can either continue or level up. I say we go back to kind of an earlier level, or a level I've already done, if possible, and maybe I'll do it a little bit faster. Uh, so, you know, we're at like 23 minutes. Let's talk about my actual impressions of this game, because this is not just a, um, you know, a, a let's play or something like that. This is also a f editorial or an objective look at my first impressions. Desktop Dungeons has a lot working in its favor. It's uh, unique. It, it's unlike basically any kind of pseudo dungeon crawler I've ever played before in my entire life. And it's got a great pedigree. Um, you know, graphically speaking, I think it looks fine. Uh, maybe a little bit not my style. It looks kind of like old spiderweb software games, which is cool, a lot of people are really into that. Um, but if you compare this to something like, you know, Pixelry, I think Pixelry maybe looks a little bit more unique and cool. But, you know, of course the game mostly comes down to its gameplay as opposed to its graphics. I, as an aside, I should mention again, the soundtrack, absolutely fantastic, one of the standout parts of the game for sure. Um, the gameplay is not necessarily as engaging as something, uh, or as many of the games that the that Desktop Dungeons kind of gets compared to at times, like people compare this to Dungeons of Dreadmore or The Binding of Isaac or, you know, Sword of the Stars of the Pit. Those are, well, you know, quite clearly, those are actually like roguelikes or roguelites. Um, and I prefer those kind of games to this. This is fun, don't get me wrong. I I've had a lot of fun with the time that I've spent with it so far. Super accessible, and it's got that Meat Boy thing going for it where when you die, you just respawn and you can do it again in like 10 or 15 minutes. I mean, obviously Meat Boy, we're talking about orders of magnitude and difference in the amount of time it takes, but uh, you know, it basically doesn't take you an hour and a half to get back to where you were. You can just play it over and over very continuously. And I really like that they've added this um, kind of town system where you can upgrade things. You know, previously when I played, it was just like, you've got three classes and go into the dungeon. Have fun. Um, so I, I enjoy this, uh, but you know, the other caveat that I need to add is that it is 15 bucks and you know, I'm one of the advocates of, you know, price your indie game wherever you want it. Uh, I, I don't think, you know, if you're charging 15 bucks for your game, you're a money grubbing, you know, evil Bobby Kotick style pseudo super villain. Um, that being said, I do think that at this price point, it's not necessarily offering what I would expect. That's a little insulting because it's a game that I think is a good game, but it's a game that I also thought when I saw it, I was like, oh, this is going to be, you know, five to ten bucks when it comes out on Steam. Does five bucks make a major difference? For one person, probably not, but across, you know, thousands of people, maybe. 
Uh, th those are just my honest thoughts on it. I think uh, this would this game would certainly be a lot easier to recommend if it was only five bucks. But then again, a lot of games would be easier to recommend if they were only five bucks. Fifteen bucks is probably a price point which is going to give a lot of people uh, some pause when it comes to purchasing it. But you know, when you price the game uh, at that point, uh, it does give it some room to come down in Steam sales. So it maybe is a valuable marketing tactic. In any case, um, why don't we do one more run here? So we'll we'll just go. We can go to random run. The game does. It's not just about like finishing the main quest. You can do. Uh, you can see here, you can select a random dungeon racing class like immediately, or select the same dungeon racing class as your last run. You can just basically leave it up to the dice rolls and, and do it if you want to. Um, why don't we go to Hobbler's Hold, which is easy, and um, we'll just start with... Uh, why don't we play as an Elven Mage, this or an Elven Wizard this time, because obviously uh, I uh, did very poorly with a fighter, so maybe the Wizard is what we want. Now, we can also spend a little bit of our gold on preparation. So we've got three different preparations we can choose one of. Uh, the shield gives us minus two damage every time we get hit. The sword gives us plus two damage every time we attack. And the wand just allows us to kill one monster, which can be very useful to get like a decent amount of uh, experience right off the start. But I usually take the shield just to make me a little bit more survivable. If I could actually pick it. Maybe not. Okay. Oh, no, there we go. I just keep clicking it on and off. I just couldn't see because of the mouse over. All right, so this should be a lot easier now. So, allow me to caffeinate for a second, and then we'll finish this dungeon, hopefully a little bit faster. Coffee's still far too hot. Um, maybe it is a coffee break roguelike then. So, we'll just look at uh, how much damage we deal to these guys. So you can see, like, those question marks now. Uh, those represent the glyphs that we can find. So, I'm pretty, yeah, I was gonna say, I'm not sure if those are, like, the health and mana boosters that we've seen so far. Um, or if they are the spells that we picked up. It turns out they are the spells that we... Did I, did I not pick up that spell from earlier? Why is this not... Oh, that's weird. Maybe you get like two passive spells that you... Or not passive, but two spells you can pick up as a uh, wizard that don't take up inventory space. This is my first game as a wizard, so I'm not totally sure. So we'll make our way through here. Is this a trap or is this some kind of treasure? Pendant of Mana. This item glows slightly blue when worn, offering a bonus of two maximum mana. Absolutely. Pick it up. Uh, we probably don't want to fight that dude right away. He's a little bit higher level than we should be. Or th than we are, I should say. Um... What is this glyph over here? I really need the fireball, so this is want to fight. We've already had that one before. I never used it because I don't understand it. And we've leveled up, so this is a little bit trickier from a like level planning standpoint. Imagine like the um, when you play as the fighter, you've almost got like the map and compass, right? Like you can see where the enemies are and plan your route accordingly, which is important if you have something like the D6. Uh, as a wizard, we don't really have that opportunity, so it's a little bit. Uh, you know, more up to chance, I guess, who we come across. And I would really like to come across some, like, level 3 monsters right now. Okay, so there's the end game boss. Or is the dungeon boss. He's only level 8, so he should be a little bit easier to handle uh, than what we were dealing with last time, which is fine. Okay, here's a level 3, so we want to kill him. Um, let's use a fireball and a second fireball, and then we'll win, and we'll get a little closer to leveling up. And there's another pendant. Gives pl plus 10 maximum HP. That's really good. All right, can I just fight this guy and win? I will lose 10. Um, yes, it was kind of close, but we made it work, and we leveled up as well. Ah, and then there's a level 2. We can just cut his head off and continue moving onwards. So I think this dungeon is, you know, much, much easier. The game does ramp up in difficulty pretty quickly, if you ask me. Uh, I have fi uh, found myself retrying dungeons over and over and over, so it's one of those games where... You know, I wouldn't even necessarily say it's based on trial and error, but you need to be um, very... Let me just take a look at this for a second. Plus, fine, uh, plus four damage. That seems really good. Um, you need to be really focused and concentrating when you're playing the game. Otherwise, you're probably not going to achieve the results that you're looking for uh, once you get past like the early point of the game. Even though this kind of looks like it might be a sort of casual game, it is not necessarily. And it's weird to say because it is. It, it's casual, but it's not like. I don't know. It's not something you can just turn off your brain and play. You really need to, to focus, which is good. You know, you can play a casual game of chess or a, a casual game of StarCraft. Um, to some extent anyway, uh, and that's how I kind of feel about this, although, you know, not necessarily saying this is more complex than either chess or StarCraft. Just shooting the shit, basically. Okay, so we've got another mana glyph, we might as well pick this stuff up. Um, and I will, um, recycle some of this stuff pretty soon, but I think first, um, we're gonna be able to spam some fireballs in on this guy, and then we'll win, and we'll level up. Okay, so, I, I'm hoping this time, I can actually get to level 10. I shouldn't need to be level 10 in order to beat the uh, boss, but I just want to prove that I can do it when the monsters are a little bit easier, because I think I seriously uh, effed up my possibilities last time, unfortunately. Now, how about this goblin? Could I still take him out? Probably, with just a couple of fireballs. 
uh, and then an attack. So we'll be getting uh, proportionally a little bit more experience. We should just be able to cut that guy up. And we also got like a lot of really good treasure this time relative to what we got last time. Like all of these passive bonuses are actually going to be awesome for me. Um, I can just kill this guy in two hits. So, oh, never mind. Uh, if I can if I use my first strike ability, which is the G key. Yep, there we go. First strike is actually a really important spell. Uh, more important than I had originally considered when I started playing the game, but it saved my ass a couple of times and all of a sudden you pretty quickly figure out what works and what doesn't and uh, first strike definitely works. So let's kill this uh, level 7 monster and we'll use um, fireball and then do I have biceps? I do have biceps. Then I should be able to win. That gives us plus 30% uh, damage recall. Uh, what is this one? Let me see. Uncovers three random dungeon tiles with normal regeneration benefits. Seeks nearby enemies. So, um, this would maybe reveal some enemies on the map, but perhaps more importantly, it also allows you to uh, get the regeneration from those three tiles that you uncover. Which could be important. You remember on the last one, I may have been able to make that work in my favor because uh, all of the uh, uncovered tiles were actually like b behind walls. So, let me see. May have actually uh, saved me there. Anyway. Uh, it's neither here nor there right now. We'll just do this and maybe we'll throw in a biceps at the end And we're gonna level up and get full health and mana afterwards anyway, so why not? Um, that being said, I'm definitely not gonna use let me see here, but maybe I can pick it up and then um, Recycle it and how much will we get out of that 150? So what I forget what we got from our conversion bonus, but we can see here plus one max mana for every 70 conversion points What am I never gonna use? I'm never gonna use uh, want to fight. So we'll toss that in there uh, I'm never, oh, sorry, that was one to fight, but I was never going to use that one either. Um, this seems pretty good to me. I'll keep all my passive benefits for now. I really want to get, now I'm at the point where I can fire um, three fireballs from full mana, which is a, a nice place to be. So again, since we only have one monster left, uh, I'm not going to level up. This really sucks. I'm actually only level seven. Oh, maybe there's more monsters over here that I could check out, but uh, I'm only level seven. I really wanted to hit level 10. Maybe th there were less monsters available on this one, though. Alright, so I think we've seen basically all of this dungeon. Uh, we may want to take a quick opportunity to just come down here uh, via the ladder and see... Oh! Oh no! I didn't mean... I thought I was going down to the next level! I totally could have killed the boss there, I promise you that. Um, use three items that's near your previous best of six. Uh, I guess debatably. Uh, so, you know, maybe we will get some gold out of this. Not very much. But uh, enough. Okay, so some pretty horrible mistakes, but in any case, uh, this is Desktop Dungeons. It's currently available on Steam. 15 bucks. There will be a link in the video description below to pick it up. Do I recommend it? It's it's at the point where I'm like wavering by, between my two positive recommendations of like, yes, pick this up if you're into this, or wait for a sale. And I have to feel like, I almost feel like I'm betraying the developers when I say like, wait for a sale, which is something I should really get over because, you know, my allegiance lies to my own opinions. But, um... You know, if, if you're willing to wait, uh, you know, maybe three to six months, or I guess it's November, so one to six months uh, for a sale for this, I would maybe recommend that you do so to avoid buyer's remorse. I don't necessarily think that $15 would make you feel bad, like you wouldn't feel bad about paying $15 for desktop dungeons. That being said, I don't necessarily know if it's as replayable as other games that it bears a superficial similarity to, uh, many of which I've mentioned. Most important thing to note is that this is, it has random procedural generation, um, it is not a roguelike. So I know a lot of people were telling me, yo, you gotta play this, this game looks right up your alley. It is kind of up my alley, but it's not a roguelike, so that like preconce preconceived notion should be out of your mind. Now hopefully you know what you're dealing with. This is a dungeon crawling puzzle slash strategy game. It's unique, it's cool, great music. Again, there will be a link in the video description below. As always, thanks for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And of course, if you did, make sure to show your support by clicking the like button. It's the easiest way that you can actually support these videos. And again, if you want to see more first impressions like this in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I'll see you next time.